There is quite a bit to talk about regarding recent JP Dokkan news and what that means for the future of both Global and JP Dokkan, especially when it comes to their respective schedules and when the sync is supposed to happen. But first, if you don't want to miss out on any more Dokkan news, especially regarding Global's upcoming 9th anniversary and everything you need to know about that, make sure you subscribe road to 70k only you can make that possible or maybe you only like the video or subscribe if you find this video in some way shape or form helpful i appreciate you being here regardless let's hop into the video all right first things first rose goku black has been announced for jp dokkan the reason why this is pretty big news is because around this time jp usually gets a new completely new dokkan fest exclusive last year or a few years ago, not last year, but this guy feels like he came out yesterday to me. Anyways, AGL Gohan released, and this was a completely new Dokkan Fest for JP at the time, released at the end of May. So Rose Goku Black is going to essentially release towards the end of May for JP Dokkan. But because Global already has this, this is now one less character Global basically has to catch up with. Because we already are down... Uh, the AGL Frieza, first form Frieza. We are down the LR Ginyu Force, and we are down Physical Tobo. And by down, I mean we don't have these characters yet. We still need these characters to catch up. So for the month of June, Dokkan, or at least JP Dokkan, will be getting Physical Rosé. And Global should be getting, based off of previous year's patterns, because they always love to do this, we should be receiving uh, first form Frieza at the end of May, early June. And then the part 2 LR will be the Ginyu Force. Which means all uh, Global will really need to catch up is Physical Topo. But here comes the problem. And this is where I'm not too sure. Let me meet my phone, my bad. This is where I'm not too sure where, where the future goes. Because at this point, remember, Dokkan loves to celebrate the Tanabata celebration at the end of June. Global Dokkan, unless, okay, Global Dokkan is not celebrating Tanabata. I don't know where or why people are saying Tanabata is coming to Global early. It doesn't make sense. If we were to, let's just take a, a quick second to think about this, okay? And look, maybe, maybe I would be wrong for this. You know, I'll just pull up the banner because I guess it doesn't really matter, right? It is what it is. Maybe I'm wrong for this, but hear me out for two seconds, okay? There, I would say, Dokkan has a lot of cool, big celebrations. But I would say there are four big celebrations in Dokkan. We have the Anniversary, that's one. Worldwide is two. Golden Week is three. And Tanabata is four. If we really had to order them, I would put Worldwide as the most hype, the biggest celebration, simply because... Both versions of the game celebrate at the same time. No one knows who's coming. A lot of hype is generated. And these characters usually tend to be better than the anniversary characters. So, again, I would give the edge to Worldwide being the biggest celebration in Dokkan. Right after that, in a very close second, would be Anniversary. That's just my opinion. Doesn't really matter for the sake of the video. After an uh, Anniversary, I would say the third biggest celebration in the game is Golden Week. And fourth would be Tenabata. Fifth, Saiyan Day, so on and so forth. Why would Dokkan drop three of the three of the four biggest celebrations in Dokkan history back to back to back on Global? It doesn't make any sense. So it's Global gets Tanabata this month, right? It's apparently what a lot of people are thinking. We get Tanabata this month, next month is Anniversary, and, and two weeks after that is the Worldwide Celebration. How is a free-to-play player, forget free-to-play it for a second, how are people who just casually spend on this game supposed to keep up with that? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Especially when you consider these characters tend to release some of the best characters in the game, on top of the fact that if they were to do that, one of these celebrations is going to... Sorry, one of these celebrations are going to get hurt, I think, financially, if they decided to do that. And what I mean by that is, if they drop Tanabata early for Global, and that new character isn't on the level of Anniversary, why are we going to summon? So, Global players are saying, okay, this, this is a cool character, but Anniversary is one month away. There's no reason for me to summon. But if the character ends up being better, 
than what Anniversary has, which is also a real possibility because Tanabata drops on JP Dokkan at the same time. And, you know, again, we know for a fact that Tanabata, um, well, right now, Tan JP Dokkan isn't getting Tanabata just right now, right? But it's a real fact, or sorry, a real possibility that Tanabata could be better than the Anniversary simply because it comes way after... Do, uh, JP Dokkan's anniversary in January so natural power creep could allow this Tanabata character to be good but if it were to drop both versions of the game at the same time and if this character is better than the anniversary characters how could I sit here and say save for anniversary why would I do that it, it, it's hard for me to make that claim if Tanabata comes first to global and the unit is better than whatever we have for the anniversary so that means everyone summons and use all their save stones for Tenovata. They don't have much for Anniversary, so not a lot of summoning is going to happen compared to um, what it what it would be if Tenovata didn't drop first. And then people just end up, I guess, saving for Worldwide. Like, one of these celebrations is going to end up getting hurt, I think, financially. Or I guess the bottom line won't be the same if they decided to do that so there's no way Dokkan is going to drop three of the four biggest celebrations back to back to back on global it's just not happening i understand we're trying to push this global and jp Dokkan sync agenda and they i think they mentioned it should be it should happen by summer and i i get that but that's just it's just not realistic global next month will be getting frieza and ginyu is it possible they get Tobo and Ginyu? Sure, but that's not that's not really the way they like to do things, right? Um, Dokkan, JP Dokkan gets this Dokkan Fest in March, and whatever Dokkan Fest they get beginning of March is what JP, sorry, what Global usually gets in the beginning of June. Think back to a character like the physical Super Saiyan Trunks and Goten from the Bio Broly movie. It's a perfect example. They dropped early March for JP. And they ended up dropping early June or late May, early June for Global. And the part 2 LR, if you remember, was Tabion and Minosha. Who wasn't a part 2 LR to them because early March Dokkan Fest don't have part 2 LRs. Tabion and Minosha was a part 2 LR to the April Dokkan Fest, which was STR Videl. And in this case, the April Dokkan Fest, late March, April Dokkan Fest was Physical Topo. So, the part 2 LR to the April Dokkan Fest is going to be the part 12 for, for global, at least, from uh, to the March Dokkan Fest. That's just the way they like to do it. So, Frieza, Ginyu, um, in June, which again means we are missing Topo. But if JP goes ahead, right, we get, or JP gets Rose, Goku Black. If they go ahead and celebrate Tanabata at the end of the month, which is completely possible, I, how are we supposed to sync up? Because while JP Dokkan gets Tanabata, Global is getting Anniversary. After Anniversary, Global gets Physical Topo, right? That one Dokkan fest between Anniversary and, um, you know, and Worldwide. And then after that, both Global and JP celebrate Worldwide. And then after that, we are still down a whole celebration with Tanabata. So... I, I don't know, man. I, I would have to say, in the month of June, Global Dokkan needs to get Global first. Like, next month, yeah. While these two characters release, in the month of June, now for Global, we need to get a lot of Global first content. Global first EZA here. Global first, you know, event there. Global first missions here. Global first missions there. The reason why I say that is because since Global is going to be down a whole Tanabata celebration, after the worldwide celebration, while Global really quickly celebrates the Tanabata, which is known on Global as a thank you celebration, but while Global celebrates that, JP Dokkan could be getting that exclusive Global content that we got in June. And if it's enough content, it should hold JP players off enough while we celebrate Tanabata. So maybe we get like, let's say three um, Global First EZAs, one Global First event, and a bunch of missions and stuff. So while we celebrate Tanabata, Global, or sorry, JP gets, when I say we, because I'm, I'm a Global player, so while Global celebrates Tanabata, JP could get, you know, one new EZA every single week with new missions dropping every few days, and that way JP Dokkan isn't completely dead. 
but there's something to do right, on, on the version of the game. It's not like, you know, it's not a completely new character, but they're not completely dead either. One version of the game is going to have to suffer for both versions of the game to catch up. It's It just is what it is. But Rose Goku Black releasing now is perfect because if this were right here, if this right here was a completely new Dokkan Fest where we just wouldn't be able to sync up by the end of the year, I think. It would just be very, very difficult, but... After Worldwide, Global needs to celebrate Tanabata if JP gets it in June. Which means, J I don't know what the heck JP Dokkan is going to do. We'll just have to see how this works. But Rose Goku Black is a step in the right direction towards the Global and JP Sync. Uh, having this happen in summer is just it's not a possibility. Because by the time Worldwide ends, we are going to be in, in fall, right? Autumn. And there's just no way we're getting synced before then because we're still missing three Dokkan Festival characters from JP Dokkan, two of which we're getting now. I mean, is it possible that we get all three in the month of June? Like, let's say Frieza drops late May, right? For Global. And then let's say like the 13th, we get like the Ginyu Force. And then maybe, you know the 25th we get topo if that were to happen i'm trying to think here i don't think many people would care anniversary is happening anyways i don't really know who's going to be something for these characters with anniversary being a few weeks away but if they could technically do that yeah right so dokkan fest end of may for uh for global right here the 12th or 13th for this part to LR, and then the 24th to the 25th for physical topo which would allow for about what a week and a half before the start of the anniversary which is a decent time i think and then after anniversary what does global dokkan get global dokkan could actually end up getting exclusive content related maybe to Tanabata if JP gets it. Which would mean that we're only really missing the units from Tanabata, but not the entire celebration and its content. So after Worldwide, we'd all we'd only really need just the characters. I don't know, dude. I don't know. This entire thing is looking very, very, very messy. There's no way, dude. There's no way Global gets Tanabata before anniversary. It's just it's just not gonna happen. But I guess at this point, anything is possible. They have to pull some shenanigans somewhere, somehow, to make this um, this sync work. But I'll keep you updated on any you know news moving forward. That's just my two cents and what the future for both versions of the game is pretty much looking like. Let me know how you think it's going to go down. I'll see you in the next one. Merry Christmas and take care.